Tell us what you got to cook for us today. I'm going to be making Buckeyes, which are a pretty traditional Ohio dish. The real thing that I'm going to be trying to mimic is this. It is a nut. So we're going to start with three cups or 475 grams of peanut butter. You have to put a salted stick of butter in. I'm just going to put it in the microwave for a little bit because it needs to be soft. And then after that, we'll mix them together till they're pretty darn smooth. You don't need too much. You don't need it to be too soft, but you also want it to still be a stick of butter. <laughs> Sorry, I have a hard time here. <laughs> and then you're gonna mix them together with either a hand mixer like this or a, with your hands and a spoon or a sand mixer or whatever. You're gonna thoroughly mix them together and then till they are very smooth. Doesn't take too much, it doesn't need to be that thick at this point, but you do want to make sure that you don't leave any butter on your mixer like I did. So I'm going to just need to grab something to push it off with and we will move on. While you're mixing that, why don't you explain to me what a Buckeye is and why, why it's significant? So a Buckeye is, as I showed you, a nut this nut, and it's the state nut of Ohio. Is that correct? I think that is. Yeah, state nut of Ohio, and also our big university team are called the Buckeyes, so that's why it's really popular here in Ohio, but it's also popular all through the United States just as a good tree. Now, the next step is to add one and a quarter table teaspoons of vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract, or six milliliters. This stuff is potent. Do not get it on you at any cost. And then you're gonna mix that in slowly because as i said before if you get it on you you will smell like vanilla for the rest of the year so now we're going to slowly add three and a quarter cups or 405 grams of powdered sugar into the mix. Now you wanna add it slowly and little bits at a time because if you add it all at once, you will have a powdered sugar explosion in your kitchen. And it gets everywhere. So you wanna start slow mixing so you don't throw it everywhere. I'm, us I'm usually guilty of this myself. Keeping stuff in the bowl. Eli, something interesting that, that I've heard, I'm um, hearing from you, is you call powder sugar, you call it powder sugar, we call it caster sugar. Huh. And the uh, other thing is your mixer doesn't make any sound. <laughs> I've never heard a mixer doesn't, that doesn't even make sound. So, it gets yeah. really loud, very quick sound. <laughs> Carry on. I, now, don't be too focused on mixing it very thoroughly at first because you have a lot more powdered sugar to go. So, like, you can add decent chunks at a time, but not too much because it will go absolutely everywhere. And also, it'll clog up your mixer, too. You just want to get the majority of it into the batter and then move on to a bit more. Mm. 
May, have you ever eaten or tasted peanut butter? Of course. <laughs> Let okay. me show you my peanut butter collection. Okay. <laughs> So, um, my mom loves peanut butter. Yeah, my peanut butter. So, um, she eats uh, no added sugar and salt, what is supposed to keep a lean or whatever you want to call it. So, this is peanut butter you have. As you, can, as you know, it's empty because, yeah, that's how things go. And then we have the peanut butter I eat, which is in a very big uh, tub, tub, I would say. I don't know how to open it. But, yeah, it's one it's one kilogram. Uh, yeah, so it's one kilogram. So I don't know how um, many ounces. I don't know. But it's a lot of peanut butter. So, yeah. The peanut butter can that we got is also quite big. Oh, what, what? Yo, yo, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, whatever you want to call it. But once you get most of it mixed in, then we're going to roll it out into small balls. I like peanut butter. Mixing does take a good amount of time because the mixing will get pretty stiff and it will clog up your mixer quite badly. So you do need to clean it out, otherwise it gets very infected very quickly. But After it's all mixed in, you just grab it pretty, uh-oh, one sec. <laughs> this. But now you can just, we use, I don't know how you'd measure this in metric, but uh, one sec. I just use a tablespoon scoop for measuring fluid and then just grab some of the batter, get it in here, and then just use my fingers to take it out. And then just roll it onto, roll it in my hands until it's roughly the shape of a ball. Now, this is a bit crumbly, so you have to be a bit careful because it will fall apart, but then you get something similar to this. Now, you'll grab the one, put it on there, put it in the fridge or in the freezer. And while well, look, they multiply. <laughs> so once you've had, let them set in the freezer, since we have a really good freezer, it multiplied the Buckeyes. <laughs> and now, well, I'll just kick this on one sec. We're gonna start melting our chocolate. Now, what you'll do is once you roll your Buckeyes, you'll stick toothpicks in them, and then you'll put them in the freezer and they'll freeze into the Buckeyes. So they stay in quite well. Now I'm gonna quickly melt up some chocolate, which is just, you can use however much chocolate you want. We just use milk chocolate. This plain old milk chocolate chocolate chips and a double boiler, which a double boiler is basically a pot with water in it with another pot sitting on it. And once this chocolate is nice and melted, we will begin to dip our Buckeyes. Now this will take, now this will take a smidgen of time. So in the meantime, I'll explain a little bit more about Buckeyes. So Buckeyes are actually one of, actually, let me set this off. What family of nut do you think Buckeyes are? Is 
Is it live? A beacon art. No. They're closely related, but no. They're actually one of the only nuts that is poisonous. Deer Deer don't even eat these nuts because of how poisonous they are. One of the only animals that I think could eat it is a goat because they eat anything. They could eat just a tin can and they'd be fine. But... (laughs) How'd they get the name Buckeye? Well, the reason why they got the name Buckeye is because they look. Let me just move and see if I can get the light. Ah, one sec. Yeah. Is because it looks like the eye of a buck, which is a male deer. Ah. In Afrikaans, we call it a bok oog. Like this. Who shot that deer? My dad. Have you shot in a deer yet? Have you shot in any ammo? Yeah, I shot a deer, was it three years ago? Three years ago was my first year. Oh, interesting. And now, now that we moved out to the country, we can just shoot them right out our front door. So, uh oh, one sec. <laughs> Now the chocolate does take a little bit of time to melt. I just put a bit of new chocolate in because we're running a tad bit low on it. So, but once it's melted, it's pretty simple to dip them. Doesn't take much time or effort. But once we do, one sec, um, see to grab a plate. You'll want to set them on a plate with parchment paper because then they won't stick as much because the chocolate will stick to anything and everything that you put it on. I think our chocolate is about ready. The double boilers do take a little bit more time since they have to go through the water. It's just to prevent the chocolate from sticking right to the bottom of the dish. Because if you melt chocolate just directly into a hot frying pan, it'll stick all over the bottom and burn. That's why double boilers are very important. But after you use the double boiler to cook the Buckeyes, I have some finished products to show you. Right here, Uh uh-oh, slippery. These are what the end products of the Buckeyes are. And they are pretty good because they are half sugar. Oh, I can't bread it. It just came out of the freezer. I bet. I would imagine it quite sweet. Yeah. No, oh, no. I beat this. But the, but the peanut butter calms it down a little bit. It doesn't feel like all sugar. What is it? Cycling peanut butter? Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. Ah, why is it? Well, that, what, do you have any uh, questions, Mehe, about? No, it seems quite out? simple and quite cool, I would say. It is. Not any questions I could think of, so yeah. Okay, well, I re- this is being recorded, so you can watch it again and get every detail and make it yourself. You could, I could see it now, a new shop in South Africa, the Buckeye Shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's your turn. 
Okay, so it's my turn. Okay, wait, just don't look. Okay. Okay, so um what I'm gonna be making today is a, 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 a traditional, quite traditional, I would say. Uh, I don't think they make it any other place in the world. It's called uh, Sous Clakis in Afrikaans. Now, the direct translation is literally sauce uh, dough, Dump, dumplings, sauce dumplings. Now, uh, sauce dumplings or sauce Clakis is a bit different from normal dumplings. It's, it's quite the opposite. It's sweeter and it tastes, in my opinion, quite a lot better. So um, I'll start off with the sauce part. So I'll just do this. And then uh, there's a pot here on this side. I don't know if you can see me. You won't be quite be able to see me. OK, but uh, in this pot is boiling water. As you can see, the steam coming. So first, what you want to do is you want to add uh, you want to add uh, one and a half cup sugar, which is twelve ounces, into your boiling water. Okay, um, uh, uh, one teaspoon uh, of sugar of cinnamon. I mean, um, one tablespoon of butter, which is uh, which is a half an ounce. And then uh, half a teaspoon of salt. You want to turn up your heat. Take this thing. And then you want to stir it. And as you stir it, it will turn in after a while, after about five minutes, it will turn into a sauce. So syrup type of uh, consistency. consistency. Now, I'll, I'm going to let this boil and do its thing and give it a stir in one or two minutes. So that's the sauce part, uh, almost done. So now I want to start with the clayky pot, the dough pot. So as you can see, wait, let me just put it here. Here's my mixer. Now, uh, this is a, a mixer. I don't know. It's a fancy mixer. I don't know if it's quite that fancy. But in the dough pot is a cake flour that I've already um, is two cups of flour, cake flour, or yeah, what, whatever flour you want to call it. And that's 16 ounces of flour. So you have your flour, then you add bridge. Uh, you add uh, one tablespoon of butter, which is 16 ounces. Two tablespoons of butter, sorry. Yeah. Um, 16 ounces. Uh, one. one tablespoon of baking powder. And then uh, two, and a, two and a half milliliter of salt, which is uh, half a table half a teaspoon of salt okay and what you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to work it in with your hands but um the butter and this mixture which is in this uh, shiny pot thing but i don't i don't like that so i'm going to use the mixer so Okay, then you are just gonna look at it and see if it's done. I think it's done. And then uh, you add uh, two beaten eggs. And milk, which I'll get now. And now it's half a cup of milk. So.
Okay, then you'll end up with this doughy uh, thing, this doughy stuff, sticky mixture, whatever you want to call it. Okay, then. Okay, you want to take your sauce. Yeah. Let me just. Okay, then you want to give your sauce a stir. Your sauce should be ready by now. Then you want to take this big spoon. Uh, uh, according to my mom, it's a dessert spoon. You want to wet your spoon. That's how the sauce looks. You wanna wait your wait, you wanna put your spoon in the mixture, what is it? so in the sauce, so it doesn't stick to the mixture. Then you wanna take your mixture, and then you wanna keep repeating this process till your dough is finished. So I'll be doing that now. The fork, okay. Question. Okay. Then you uh, want to close the lid. Turn the, turn the heat down. And then you want to let it rise and uh, actually cook. It's to do it thing. It's thin. And now you want to, uh, to thicken the sauce. So we have already made a batch. So uh, our, our oven or whatever you want to call it isn't as magical as your fridge. So, as you can see, this uh, is how it looks if you have already made it. What is it After you've taken it out. So, right. You went, you went mute there. If you want to turn your sound back on, <coughs> have I been muted this whole time? Just a few seconds. Just yeah, okay. just a few seconds. So. And then you want to stir it. You want to take the big. Uh, what was There's a sauce. Then you're going to close the lid so that it heats up and it actually starts to become like a sauce. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and then this. after this is finished in this pot, um, it should be end up. It's on a roll. <laughs> something like this. Skippity furry camera. Uh, 
Now, is that is that like a bread or? Yeah, it's it's almost like a a, a doughy. I don't know what do you want to call it. It's almost like bread, but uh, a lot more doughy, I would say. And then uh, you normally <laughs> you normally add uh, uh, cinnamon sugar, which is cinnamon and sugar combined. And then it looks like this. And then after. You know, take your sauce and then pour it over. Okay. And then uh, you enjoy. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. But very good. Bernice, interpret what would it be like? What kind of food would it be like in the United States? It's almost like a donut hole, but uh, more to the consistency of a bagel. And you, you're going to so eat it can, warm? You can eat it warm or cold, but it's nicer warm. And then you can put ice cream with it and that. What I can say is my, I don't know if you remember, we spoke about Betty, our maid, and she would always cook for us that worked for us when I came over. So Clakey's would be her birthday present to each of us when it was our birthdays. So when it's your birthday, she would make it through the day and it would be our treat that night for dessert on your birthday. Mm -hmm. So it's got a very special place in my heart that he's actually made it. Good. And you normally eat it when it's rainy and cold and not that pleasant. So that's when this tastes the best. Could could you could you spell what it's called? Pardon? Could you spell the word what it's called? Oh, so it's like this. So it's uh, is an Afrika an Afrikaans. Yeah, yeah. Um, is um O U S um K L E U I no K L U I. D J I E S and then yeah. Sauce Glakies. Okay. And what does the sauce taste like? It's sugar water. Um, sweet, water? sweet. No, sweet, uh, sweet like oh, um cinnamon, cinnamony. So it's sweet, milky, and tastes like cinnamon, I would say. Almost like a caramel. Yeah. Yeah, almost, yeah. So Eli, you think you could you could make this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. I'm not that like good. Well again, it's gonna be recorded so you can go back by each detail. And uh, you, I expect you to make this for us. Then when we visit you, you can uh, we could all have this dish together. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you so very much. Great, great cooking show here. <laughs>